All around the planet, people are awakening to the reality that humanity and the Earth are now entering a heightened phase of activity on their inseparable journeys of growth and expansion. This acceleration is marked by the increasing intensity of global events and by the rising temperature of nearly every planet in our solar system. While here on Earth, time itself seems to be speeding up and chaos mounting as phenomenal shifts occur in our physical and perceptual realities with increasing rapidity. The simplest explanation behind this sense of speeding up is that our planet's vibrational frequency is rising. This event, which many ancient cultures have prophetically termed the quickening, has begun and it is the greatest opportunity of our times. For we are living in a period of tremendous change, where humanity's truths are shifting with exponential rapidity as today's more advanced technologies and awareness are working to reveal the new truths of tomorrow. And just as the perspectives of those who were born 50 or 100 years ago have had to shift to allow for our present version of reality, so too will we be invited to expand our perspectives of what is possible, to allow for the unfathomable changes that will come with the turning of the age and the birth of a new world. That said, one very real possibility that our research into the work of other seekers and sages indicates is becoming increasingly probable, is that the world-changing events that so many are consciously or subconsciously waiting to occur in 2012 could actually happen as early as October of this year, 2011. And though we have awakened to the possibility that our world could be greatly altered before 2012, it is not our intention with this presentation to prophesy events as they are going to occur, but rather we intend to merely present some possibilities that might serve to expand people's perspectives of what could be. For we believe that by expanding our imaginations to explore possible future events, we may prevent ourselves from reacting in fear should the previously unimagined become manifest. And as a result of having already experienced these events in our minds, we will be more centered and able to see the opportunities they present should they or something similar occur. And so, with this understanding of the power of imagination as a means by which we may navigate the unknown, this presentation will not only explore what sorts of events could occur between now and October that might lead to the end of the world as we know it, but we will also look at how such events, regardless of how challenging they may seem, could serve to bring humanity to a global experience of unity consciousness that would then lead us into a harmonious new existence and to our return to the long prophesied experience of heaven on earth. All around the planet, hundreds of millions of people are waiting for events to unfold in the year 2012 that they believe will bring either the birth of a harmonious new reality or the end of the world. But what if those world-altering events were actually to take place this year, in 2011? This anticipated period of great change and purification, which many believe will happen sometime between now and 2012, is referred to as the shift of the ages. And though there are those who believe that the shift is some grand event that is going to occur in the outer physical world, or in the cosmos at some point in the not-too-distant future, bringing either salvation or destruction to the world. There are others who believe that the shift is happening right now, and in fact that it has been and will always be happening. For these people believe that the shift can be experienced at any moment by anyone who is willing to make the internal shift back to one where instead of seeing all beings and events of the world as separate and chaotic, the seeker learns to see that every aspect of existence is serving the divine plan by urging humanity to re-establish its faith and connection to the divine original source of creation, known to many as God or Great Spirit. For it is commonly understood both in the realms of science and spirituality that everything has come from one and that to one we shall return. 
However, today, our thoughts and awareness have moved about as far from one as it is possible to get, as humanity's dualistic perspectives and survival of the fittest mentalities have served to divide the world into dueling pairs of opposites, where many believe that they are good while others are evil, that they are light while others are dark, and that they are right while others are wrong. As a result, this divided perspective of existence has every human living for themselves, operating by his own personal will in an attempt to find inner peace by shaping the outer world according to his own likes and dislikes. However, what so many people are realizing today is that the peace we seek cannot be found by creating change in the world outside oneself, for true peace can only be found within. And we may see the truth of this when we consider that all around the world, there are nearly 7 billion people who are trying to affect change in the world outside themselves, in order to make others and the world match their vision of what is right, so that they can find peace inside. However, when we realize that there are 7 billion people with 7 billion different visions of what the world should be like, then we may see that that peace we seek can never be attained by trying to shape the physical world according to our dualistic ideals of right and wrong, as our conflicting views will always result in the paradoxical need to fight for peace. And thus we may see that the only way to find true everlasting peace is to learn to be at peace with the way things are. And it is this holistic perspective that all is perfect as it is that is taught in the ancient practices of Buddhism, Taoism, and Yoga, as well as certain native spiritual traditions. And which is echoed in the words of the Taoist sage Lao Tzu, who says in the Tao Te Ching, True perfection seems imperfect, but is perfectly itself. Faith is the key to finding this perfection in all. For when one learns to see that all beings and events exist for the divine purpose of encouraging us to seek and find that eternal peace inside, then we may learn to see that all is in fact serving the divine, and therefore all is divine. And by thus establishing faith that every event that happens in one's life occurs to assist their soul's evolution, one may come to see that salvation is not a person, place, or prize. It is a state of mind. For in this faithful state, and the love that accompanies it, one is able to face and flow through all of life's challenges in grace and gratitude. Thus it is this ability to see all as one, and all as divine, that marks the individual's inner shift and return to one. And so while some people believe that the approaching shift will be an external earthly or cosmic event, and others an internal evolution, there are still others who believe that the shift that is about to happen will be both. These people find truth in the familiar phrase, conflict breeds consciousness, and believe that many humans need some major shifts in their outer physical reality in order to encourage them to make the inner shift that will enable them to return to one. Thus it is thought by some adherents to this perspective that the physical events that are set to unfold in the next few months leading up to the end of October 2011 have been designed to escalate to such a dramatic level that most of humanity will be faced with the possibility of their own death and the loss of everything that they have worked to achieve in the material world, all of which would occur for one divine purpose. For in a world where so many are living only for material achievement and survival, it will not be until that material reality is threatened with extinction, and when money and luxury fail to satisfy our needs for peace and comfort, that the majority of people will awaken to the worthlessness of material wealth and success, and thereby be inspired to seek inwards to find a new purpose and meaning for life. And in so doing, many will finally understand the words that they have been uttering for so long, which state that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, but rather we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And thus when the events of the next few months have served their divine purpose, and when the death and destruction have shaken us from our material obsessions, and given birth to our awareness of the eternal spirit that connects us all, we will learn to see the world in a new way, where even death and destruction, which humanity has denied and feared for so long, are seen to have a place and a purpose for which to be thankful and loving. 
And as these increasingly intense events unfold in the coming months, they will teach humanity the lessons of pride and humility by demonstrating the futility of our efforts to control the world outside of ourselves. And when people finally tire of wishing that the world was something that it isn't, and when they learn to be at peace with the way things are, for they see it all as part of the divine plan, then may they also learn to see that exerting one's personal will to try to stop these events from happening would be like trying to stop others from having the same opportunity for learning. For it is our selfishness and our ignorant use of free will that has brought us collectively into our present state of existence. Therefore, perhaps it is only by a 180 degree reversal through selflessness, through the complete and utter surrender of ourselves and our personal will to the divine will of the Tao, that we may allow the forces of true change and redemption to work through us and liberate us completely from the unholy illusion of this world. And for this reason, some believe that it will be the tremendous shifting of outer events in the months between now and October 28, 2011, that will inspire humanity's inner shift, helping them realize that we cannot, nor are we meant to change our outer world in order to find peace. But rather we are urged to turn inwards, to seek and find the eternal peace that comes when one learns to see the divine purpose and perfection of all. And it is with this unified perspective of existence that one learns to relinquish my will for thy will, thereby realigning himself with the divine will and marking their long-awaited return to one. So when will these major changes occur in our outer reality that will encourage humanity to make its inner shift back to one? For the past few years, hundreds of millions of people around the world have been preparing themselves for an event that they believe will occur on December 21st, 2012, that will either bring the end of the world or the birth of a new reality. However, an understanding of the Mayan calendar discovered through Swedish researcher Carl Kalman's study of ancient Mayan monuments, when compared with the escalating intensity of upcoming global events, shows the probability that those world-altering events could happen in the next few months between now and October 28, 2011. Considering the recent development of upcoming earthly and cosmic events that are set to unfold this year, which we will discuss shortly, this shift of perspective from 2012 to 2011 is one that people all over the world are starting to awaken to. While even the Mayans themselves, who have never given a specific date for when we could expect these big changes to occur, as they see the shift more as a process that occurs over time than an event that occurs on a given day, even the Mayans are now saying that great change will come in 2011. And thus it is our intention with the presentation of the following information to encourage people to prepare for the possibility that the world could be greatly changed this year. For the magnitude of shifting events that are set to unfold in the next couple of months could be so great that anyone caught still waiting for things to happen at the end of 2012 might be so shocked by the suddenness of events that all they will be able to do is react in fear, thereby making them more easy to control, while at the same time blinding them to the divine purpose and opportunities that are present in the moment. That said, let us explore Kalaman's work and how it illustrates October 28, 2011 as the end of the Mayan calendar and the birth of a new reality. Though to many the Mayan pyramid is simply a monument used for ceremonies and sacrifice, Kalaman's research reveals that the Mayan pyramid is in fact a calendar of evolving consciousness, where each of its nine steps, also known as waves or underworlds, are related to a specific type of consciousness that is learned during the period of time that it takes us to move from the beginning of each step towards its end. Which in doing so, it is said we are moving from seed to fruition of the consciousness that is the focus for that level. Interesting to note is that each step of the pyramid or underworld is divided into 13 equal segments, comprised of alternating dark and light energies referred to as days and nights, 
which are as necessary for the growth and expansion of our consciousness as the cycles of night and day are for the harmonious growth of our Earth's surface dwelling ecosystems. These 13 equal segments of time are referred to as heavens or stages of creation, each of which is related to a specific Mayan deity and a stage of growth or learning that occurs during each period of time. Also essential to note here is that each time we step up a level on the pyramid, things speed up by 20 times, which it is said occurs because, as we learn the lessons toward the end of each step, the vibrational frequency of our collective consciousness, and therefore our reality, rises by 20 times. Thus to illustrate how the Mayan pyramid is a calendar of evolving consciousness, and how it relates to the birth of a new reality by October 28, 2011, let us look at the bottom step of the pyramid referred to as the cellular underworld. This step charts the evolution of cellular consciousness from the time of the Big Bang to the creation of the first highly organized cells, and finally to the full realization of cellular consciousness. The period of time it takes to move from seed to fruition of this consciousness is 16.4 billion years, divided into 13 equal segments of 1.2 billion years, which means that during this phase of creation, there occurred a subtle shift in consciousness every 1.2 billion years that brought the collective mind to a deeper experience of the cellular underworld. To explain this further, let's move to the eighth step on the pyramid, known as the galactic underworld, and whose focus for learning is ethical consciousness. Remember here that each time we move up a step on the pyramid, that things speed up by 20 times. And so, where consciousness at the bottom of the pyramid was changing roughly every 1.2 billion years, when we moved up to the eighth step, which began on January 5th, 1999, consciousness, which on the step just below, was changing every 19.7 years, then on the eighth step began to shift every 360 days, with a focus on the collective development of our ethical consciousness. This development of our ethics can be seen quite clearly when we look at the new perspectives that have arisen in the collective mind since January 1999. For it has been since this time that humanity has taken its greatest strides to purify its ethical perspective by realizing the impact that our choices have on the healthy, harmonious existence of ourselves, the earth, and all living things. And as a result of our growth and learning during this period, we have been raising the frequency of our collective consciousness and thus the vibratory rate of existence thereby resulting in the speeding up of everything by 20 times that occurs as we near the fruition of learning on each step of the pyramid. And it is this increase in the vibration of consciousness that is responsible for the sensation of the quickening that so many people are experiencing around the world. For as the vibratory rate of our consciousness speeds up, so does everything in creation, including time and awareness. To get a better understanding of the process of this quickening that is leading us to its climax on October 28, 2011, let us consider the seventh wave that began in 1755 AD at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, at which point consciousness began shifting roughly every 19.7 years, until January 5, 1999 when it sped up again and began shifting every 360 days. This is why we had what were referred to as generation gaps in the time before January 1999. Because prior to that date, our consciousness shifted at a slower rate. When a new thought was introduced to the world, it would take a longer period of time for our consciousness to assimilate that concept. For instance, when the perspective that women are equal to men was presented to the Western world, it took roughly 20 years for that seed of an idea to take root. However, for those who were alive for 40 or 60 years before that idea was presented, it could take longer for their perspective to switch, if it did at all, because they had spent so long seeing the world in a way that was different to what was now being presented. However, that all changed when we moved up to the 8th wave in January 1999. At the same time as the global proliferation of the internet, for human consciousness then began to expand at an accelerated rate, as any new idea or concept that was created or realized could be immediately learned by anyone around the world, regardless of how young or old they were. 
Because our perspective of the world was accelerating at a speed relative to the phenomenal global growth of the internet, many people around that time experienced a sensation of quickening. And though this quickening is perceived by many as a speeding up of time, still others believe that it isn't time that is speeding up, but rather that it is the amount of change in information that we are able to process in that time that is accelerating. Thus aware of this concept of the quickening of consciousness, let's now look at the ninth step or wave, which began just recently on March 9th, 2011, two days before the earthquake in Japan at which point consciousness, which was previously shifting every 360 days, is now shifting every 18 days, which it will continue to do until October 28, 2011, when it is said that we will come to the simultaneous completion and full realization of all nine underworlds at once. Which in other words means that around the end of October, every living thing, which is an individual thought of the collective mind, would somehow come to the simultaneous full realization of every level of creation from the moment of the Big Bang to the completion of the Mayan calendar on October 28th. And here it is thought that the only way that we could come to the simultaneous full realization of every aspect of creation is to become one with it. For no one knows you like you know yourself. And therefore, in order to truly know every aspect of creation, some believe that we will be given the opportunity to experience our oneness with everything that has and will ever exist, as if it were ourselves. And it will be through this experience of oneness that we finally realize truly who, what, when, how, and why we really are. This return to one is reflected in the scientific and spiritual teachings around the world, which uniformly agree in the expansion and contraction of the universe, and which also state that everything has come from one, and that to one we shall return. This concept of our return to one is also supported in the focus for learning during our current experience of the ninth wave, which is dedicated to the collective development of our unity consciousness which Calvin's research indicates will be fully realized by October 28, 2011. Another strong indicator that the world-altering events which so many people are expecting to occur in 2012 could happen before October 28, 2011 has come from our recent understanding of what are known as the Hopi prophecies of the Blue and Red Star Kachinas and how they relate to the events that are unfolding right now, and which will culminate in the days and months before the end of October 2011. However, before we relate the story of the Blue and Red Star Kachinas, it is imperative that people have an understanding of the changeable nature of prophecy. For not all prophecies exist to tell us what is to be, but rather they tell us what we need to hear in order to inspire us to make changes to our inner being and perspectives that will ultimately assist our spiritual evolution. This is why, in many cases, prophecies such as the Hopi's story of the blue and red Kachinas speak of tragic events, including the collapse of the material world and its systems, and even the ultimate demise of humanity. For it is a fact today that most humans in their obsession for material success and survival do not spare a second thought for their soul or spiritual self until they are faced with death, suffering, and the inevitable collapse of everything they have come to depend on in the material world. Thus we may see that these prophecies exist for the sole purpose of assisting humanity's evolution from a purely material-based consciousness to one of spirit. For it is by hearing these end-time prophecies and by seeing the signs of these prophecies fulfilled in current day events, that one is given the opportunity to fully realize the temporary nature of our physical reality, and thereby be inspired to seek out an understanding of the greater spiritual purpose of our existence. And though many in the world today will ignore these prophecies and stories of destruction, because of their fear of contemplating the end of the material world as we know it, what so few people understand is that prophecies can be changed. For if it can be understood that the destructive stories and events detailed in prophecies exist for the sole purpose of encouraging a shift in consciousness, then it may be realized that once the collective mind has made that inner shift, 
the cataclysmic events that are no longer needed will eventually give way, as the group mind's vibrations are raised to match those of a harmonious new experience of reality, where there will be an entirely new set of lessons to be learned. Meanwhile, those who out of fear choose to deny our spiritual purpose and cling to the material world, will be required to experience increasingly more destruction at an intensity that exactly matches that of their attachment to their material-based perspective of existence. For some, it will not be until they've experienced the complete destruction of the planet and all its life that they will finally be inspired to surrender their hate, fear, and pride, and see the spiritual purpose and oneness of everything in existence. Having thus awakened to the spiritual reality of all as one, their soul would then rise to the spirit level, at which point they would join all of the other souls, energies and entities who have made the same choice to return to one. And here it is essential to realize that our reality is not, nor can it be changed by our fearful efforts of self-will, such as, let's focus our will to stop this from happening. For in any such efforts, the lower limiting vibrations of fear that motivate people to try to control events will create blockages that prevent the free movement of the higher vibrations of divine love, will, and wisdom throughout the body. That said, we may see that through proper attention and an understanding of prophecies such as the Hopi story of the blue and red kachinas, people are given the opportunity to make a choice that will greatly affect their spiritual evolution. And it is the importance of this choice in our soul's journey that is reinforced by the appearance of the glyph representing the word choice on the Hopi monument known as Prophecy Rock. Thus the choice, which will become increasingly prominent in the days and months approaching October 28, 2011, is Will we choose to cling to our material perspective of existence and live in fear and hate as our physical world crumbles around us? Or will we, like a phoenix rising from the flames, choose with faith and love to see the divine purpose of the decline of our material existence, whose passing will inspire a once material-obsessed humanity to shift to a more spirit-based perspective of existence. For it has been said in another message given to us by the Hopi people that this could be a good time. And for anyone who sees the spiritual purpose of the events that are set to unfold in the next few months, it probably will be. While those who wish to hold on to the old world and its ways might find the next few months extremely challenging. With this understanding of the divine purpose and the changeable nature of prophecy, let us now look at some information that has been surfacing from NASA in the past couple of months and how it relates very clearly to the Hopi prophecy of the blue and red star Kachinas, thereby indicating that the world-altering events that so many people are expecting might occur in 2012 could happen as early as October 2011. Thus, the Hopi prophecy of the blue and red star Kachinas, which may be read in its entirety at the link below, speaks of four celestial bodies that will appear in our skies announcing that we have entered the end times. These four bodies are referred to in the prophecies as Togongahoya and Palongahoya, the guardians of the North and South Poles, Nangasohu, referred to as the Blue Star Kachina, and the Red Star Kachina, also known as the Purifier. It is said in the prophecy that in the final days we will look up in our heavens and we will witness the return of the two brothers, Pogongahoya and Palongahoya, who helped create this world in the birthing time. In the final days, the Blue Star Kachina will come to be with his nephews, and they will return the Earth to its natural rotation, which is counterclockwise. It is also stated in the prophecy that the return of the Blue Star Kachina, who is also known as Nangasohu, will be the alarm clock that tells us of the new day and a new way of life, that a new world is coming. This is where the changes will begin. Of extreme interest is the fact that NASA has recently, albeit quietly, released that there are three, what are presently being called comets, heading to Earth right now, all of which will be visible and in very close proximity to the Earth between the dates of August 15th and September 26th, 2011. Though the first body to make its pass will be Comet Honda, coming in from the south, and at its closest approach to Earth on August 15th, 2011, 
Of particular note is the body that people are referring to as Comet Elenin, which much research is showing is either a supermassive brown dwarf star or is being followed very closely by one. This conclusion has been derived from the fact that there have been three alignments with this comet, the Earth, and at least one other celestial body over the past year and a half. And each alignment has resulted in a major earthquake on Earth. To see the dates of these alignments for yourself, you may visit NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory webpage at the link below. Here you will see that the first alignment with Elenin occurred on February 23, 2010 on the same day as the massive earthquake in Chile. The next alignment on September 4th, 2010, which corresponds with a recent earthquake in New Zealand. And there was a third alignment around March 11th on the same day as the major earthquake in Japan. The fact that these alignments all occurred when Elenin was a great distance away from the Earth indicates the incredible mass of the object and the probability that it is not a comet but rather a supermassive brown dwarf star, or that is being followed very closely by one. During our last alignment with this object, which was at the same time as the massive earthquake in Japan, Elenin was at a distance of 2.155 astronomical units, roughly two times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And now, we will have our next alignment with this object around September 26, 2011. However, this time, rather than being on the other side of the Sun, it will be much closer, and in between the Earth and the Sun, at a distance of 0 0.396 astronomical units. And, this time, it will be an alignment of four bodies, rather than just three, which will include Mercury, the Sun, Elenin, and the Earth. It is very possible that around this day we will have some major earthquake activity, the likes of which we have never seen before, which will be accompanied by the appearance of a third comet in our skies, known as Levy. Also worth mentioning here is that many of our sources suggest that around this time, we will see the fulfillment of the prophesied three days of darkness, where the light from the sun will be obscured for approximately three days, after which time the sun will rise again. Though this may be possible, it is also possible that the three days of darkness will occur a little closer to the October 28th date, when we are nearer in proximity to the Red Star Kachina. That said, after our next alignment with Elenin around September 26th, there will be a series of other close passes between September 26th and November 23rd that could cause further shifting including our closest pass with the object which would occur on October 17, 2011, at a distance of 0 0.232 astronomical units. And an interesting event around November 3rd, when we would pass through the tail of Elenin. Worth noting here is that these dates will probably change somewhat, as it is assumed that Elenin will speed up significantly as it slingshots around the Sun before passing the Earth. Considering the approach of these celestial bodies, one possible interpretation of this information and how it relates to the Hopi prophecies of the blue and red Kachinas is that Honda and Levi are the nephews referred to in the prophecy as the guardians of the North and the South Poles, as Levi is coming from the North and Honda from the South. While Elenin is the blue star Kachina, which will be seen in the sky before and during the major earthquake at the end of September, and whose appearance in our heavens, the prophecies say, would mark the beginning of the changes and signify that we were in the end times. For the prophecies state that not far behind the twins will come the purifier, the red star Kachina, who will bring the great day of purification. Having accounted for comets Levi and Honda as the guardians of the north and south, it is our belief that Comet Elenin, the blue star Kachina, is not a brown dwarf star, but rather that it is being followed very closely by one, or some other supermassive celestial body. And according to our understanding of the prophecies, this supermassive body that is following Elenin would be the red star Kachina, known as the Purifier, whose passing due to phenomenal gravitational and electromagnetic forces would change the existence of humanity and the Earth forever. For it is said in the prophecies that on the day of purification, the earth, her creatures, and all life as we know it will change forever. 
and that every living thing will be offered the opportunity to change from the largest to the smallest thing. It tells us that the way through this time is to be found in our hearts and through reuniting with our spiritual self. And then it reminds us that everything we experience is all a matter of choice, thus echoing the choice of whether we will face the end of the material world as we know it with fear and denial, or whether we will choose to see its divine purpose with love and faith, and thereby return to the original way where everyone and everything is seen as one and divine. Thus, with this understanding of how the approaching comets relate to the Hopi prophecies of the blue and red Kachinas, one may also note how the dates of Elenin's closest interactions with Earth, occurring on September 26th, October 17th, and November 3rd of 2011, strongly supports Kalaman's research which indicates that around October 28th, 2011, we will experience the long prophesied end of the Mayan calendar and the birth of a new reality. I am ready for the next step in humanity's evolution. And now we will seek to unite with others. The time has come to live for each other. Having explored the possibilities of how the world could be greatly changed by October 28, 2011, let us now consider how the events that are set to unfold in the next few months could assist humanity in its evolution, from a purely material-based perspective of existence to one more rooted in spirituality. As mentioned before, there are many people in the world today who, because of their focus on material success and survival, will not spare a second thought for their soul or spiritual self until they are faced with death suffering and the inevitable collapse of everything they have come to depend on in the material world. Thus, in accordance with the familiar phrase that it is always darkest before the dawn, it is our belief that in the coming months the world will be required to experience a level of death and destruction that will encourage its material-obsessed inhabitants to return to a more spiritual-based perspective of existence. And though it's understandable that the collapse of our material world and its systems could be quite a frightening experience, it is essential to understand here that those who learn to have faith in the spiritual purpose of these events will be given the tools and awareness that will allow them to face and flow through all of the challenges of the coming shift in relative grace and ease. We have been told that faith is the key. For when one learns to see that all beings and events exist for the divine purpose of encouraging us to seek and find that eternal peace inside with the way things are, then we may learn to see that all is, in fact, serving the divine, and therefore all is divine. And with this perspective, one may learn to move through the events of the coming months with a heart full of love and gratitude, rather than being consumed by hate and fear. And it is the power of this faith to bring us peace that is being referred to in the Hopi prophecy of the blue and red Kachinas, when it says, Life will get very perverted, and there will be little social order in these times. Many will ask for the mountains themselves to fall upon them, just to end their misery, while still others will appear as if untouched by what is occurring. For they are the ones who remember the original teachings, and who have reconnected their hearts and spirit. Having thus remembered the divine role that destruction may play in our spiritual evolution, let us now explore some of the potential challenges that could unfold in the next few months that might assist our soul's journey back to one. And remember here that it is not our intention with this presentation to prophesy events as they are going to occur, for it is our belief that our future is always changing in accordance with our willingness to learn new lessons and perspectives. That said, our intention herein is to merely present some possibilities of what events could occur that might lead to the collapse of the material world as we know it, and to humanity's subsequent return to a spirit-based consciousness. Though to many people whose perspective of the state of our world is molded by popular news and media, the idea that our entire material reality could collapse in the months between now and October 28, 2011 might seem like a sensationalist Hollywood film. 
What so few people realize is that the process is already well underway. In truth, a simple string of events whose elements are already in place could cause the toppling of our existing world systems within as little as a week or 10 days. And though it may not look exactly like this, this is one possibility of how it could happen. All it would take is another staged terrorist attack in an American city similar to that of 9-11. Except this time, rather than airplanes, the damage would be delivered by a device called a suitcase nuke, which is a hypothetical suitcase-sized nuclear bomb, which has begun to receive a lot of mention in films and news reports within the popular media. If such a bomb were to go off in an American city, and the authorities were to link its creation to Iran, whom the U.S. is wrongfully accusing of developing nuclear weapons, in the same way that it accused Iraq of developing weapons of mass destruction, this would pave the way for a U.S.-led allied attack on Iran, which would then mark the official beginning of World War III. In truth, this war has already begun, with U.S.-led trade sanctions against Iran being imposed by the United Nations in an effort to cripple the country's military and economic production, while the U.S. and its allies make preparations for war. It is also known that for some months now, the U.S. has been amassing troops and weapons in Israel in preparations for a massive offensive in the Middle East. However, with the U.S. having recently reached its $14.3 trillion debt ceiling, with the dollar flagging and the euro near collapse, and with the U.S. already overextending itself in wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and Pakistan, its decision to engage in a world war, along with the crippling effects of the staged terrorist attack, would crush whatever faith remained in the U.S. markets and result in the collapse of the American dollar, which would in turn begin the spiraling collapse of all the world economies. With world oil prices hovering at record highs, the Iranian president has promised that as soon as the first bomb drops on Iran, he will set the oil fields on fire. Thus, with the value of the euro and the dollar dropped through the floor, the flaming oil fields would result in the skyrocketing of gas prices, which would then lead to the inability to transport food and other goods around the world. Statistics indicate that without steady transport, most urban centers would be depleted of food and resources within three days. And as quickly as that, the world would be changed forever. However, there is much research which we will post on our webpage that indicates that these are just the beginning of a series of progressively intense and unfathomable events that have been designed to be so shocking that many people who are completely unaware of them will be desperate for any form of salvation. And it will be at the point of humanity's greatest desperation that those who have orchestrated these events will provide one self-serving solution, and that is to unite the globe under the authority of a new world order. Here are existing political, economic, and military institutions which unite under a one world government, one world economy, and one world religion, which would offer to meet the immediate needs of humanity, providing food, money, and medicine, and even miracles, in exchange for complete obedience and subservience to the system. However, it is essential to understand here that even though the voice calling people to the new world order may use the appealing words of unity, truth, and service, it will only be offering a temporary solution to the symptoms of humanity's suffering, along with promises to preserve a degree of comfort and security within a familiar system, where people are divided by the old world perspectives of good and evil, rich and poor, strong and weak. This voice will speak to people's fears and to their desires to protect and preserve the self. And all those who choose out of fear to cling to the material and continue their support of a ruling elite who have proven their lack of caring for the world and its inhabitants, will by the quality of their own thoughts and emotions be required to experience increasingly more hardships until such a time that they are willing to put their faith in the divine spirit rather than the corrupt institutions of man or his false gods. So what sort of events could unfold in the next few months that might bring the world to such a state of desperation that it would agree to uniting the planet under the authority of a new world order? 
should events similar to those mentioned previously occur. It is possible that the desperation caused by global food shortages and the collapse of the world's economies could lead to worldwide pandemonium, as cities erupt in mass riots and looting, while people rise against each other and their governments in a desperate attempt to acquire food and resources for themselves and their families. This violence would be greatly compounded by the threat of nuclear war and invading forces that would be escalating around the world. Add to this the hysteria that would be caused if the Earth was shrouded in three days of darkness that most people didn't know would end. And then add another devastating earthquake which would cause the meltdown of 30 nuclear reactors around the planet, whose radioactive waste would spill into the Earth's air and oceans. And then, at the point when the entire world seemed divided and at war with each other, and when the state of humanity seemed all but lost, we would hear news reports of a strange object approaching from space, which was previously thought to be Comet Elenum, but which upon its approach, news reports would tell us is actually a spaceship. And to the world's surprise, from this ship would come fake alien invaders to attack the Earth whose superior weapons and technology, actually created by our own world's military, would cause much damage and loss of life. And the world's leaders, professing themselves to be greatly overmatched, would have only one choice to save the planet. And that would be to unite the world's military forces. With the entire planet reeling from war and the effects of the devastating earthquakes caused by the prophesied approach of a purifier, people all over the world would be praying for a miracle when all of a sudden their prayers would be answered. Somehow the Earth's allied forces would miraculously defeat the aliens in a staged final battle, seemingly through their own military might, or with assistance from other aliens, either real or fake, or even through the supernatural assistance of a false messiah-like figure. And when the world allied forces destroy the approaching ship, which was once thought to be a blue comet, we would see the fulfillment of the ninth and last sign of the Hopi prophecies, indicating that we have arrived at the end times, which reads, You will hear of a dwelling place in the heavens, above the earth, that shall fall with a great crash. It will appear as a blue star. Very soon after this, the ceremonies of my people will cease. For very soon afterward, the red star Kachina will return, and he shall bring with him the dawn of the fifth world. With the alien threat defeated, a broken and battered humanity would still have to deal with the wrath and destruction caused by the approaching Red Star Kachina. And thus, in the wake of humanity's staged victory, and in the face of oncoming threats, the world's united nations would, in a show of false goodwill, speak of the oneness of humanity and call for the unification of the world under a one-world government. All of the world's debts would be erased, and a new global currency would be created of which everyone would be offered a set number of credits in exchange for their willingness to keep working for the self-same system of governance and authority. Anyone wishing to receive these cash credits, food supplies and medical care from this one world system would be required to get a microchip implant that would allow their movements and ID to be tracked. And all those who do not comply with the rules and regulations of the system would simply have their chip deactivated. And at the top of this new world order, at the capstone of its pyramid of control, would be the false savior, which could appear either as an alien being or as a luminous messiah-like figure who would perform signs and miracles so great that they may deceive, if that were possible, even the elect. And though this figure may have played a role in assisting humanity through its hardships, either with the fake alien invasion or by performing miracles of medicine and technology, its deception will be obvious. For rather than inspiring humanity to see the divine in all, this God with all its wonders and miracles would have humanity focus its worship on one supposedly divine being or institution, thereby reserving a space for the old world divisions of right and wrong, good and evil. And the worship of this thing would be most likely controlled by our present day ruling elite and popular spiritual leaders who would place themselves in between humanity and this fake god. As fantastical as all this may sound, there is much compelling evidence that points to the possibility of such events occurring, even those as extraordinary as the fake alien invasion. 
the possibility of which is being planted in people's minds through the noticeably high number of alien invasion movies and television shows that have come out in the last year, including the recent National Geographic series called When the Aliens Attack, which shows how the world's military forces would face and defeat a hostile alien invasion, not if, but when it happens. And here it is essential to realize that compliance with the New World Order is a trap, just as surely as wishing harm upon those responsible for its creation. For both are reactions of fear. However, if one is able to remember that all of this death and destruction is actually serving the divine purpose of shifting us from a material-based consciousness to one founded more on spiritual awareness, then we may break away from the fearful reactions of compliance and resistance and take our first steps down the path towards the original way, mentioned in the Hopi prophecies, where everything is seen as one and sacred. For if we can learn to see that those whom we would perceive as dark or evil are in fact serving us by providing experiences that are essential on our path to self-realization, then perhaps it is also possible to see that in fact they are us, or at least an essential part of us, just as we are a part of them. This vision of oneness is reflected in the words of Rumi when he says, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make sense anymore. With this perspective, one may realize that all of the world's heightened chaos and conflict isn't actually the creation of one diabolical individual or organization, but rather in accordance with the universal wisdom, as above, so below. It is an exact reflection or projection of the mounting conflict raging in the hearts and souls of the collective mind. Or so many individual souls, who are wishing to move beyond this meaningless material existence, still feel powerless to do so. However, when we see the destruction of these systems which will no longer be able to support our needs, and when our leaders whom we have relied on to keep us safe start a war that we realize could destroy the entire planet, those who have felt trapped by the system will finally let go of their dependence on it and seek a new way of living that is more in line with their inner heart's urge for peace and harmony. And thus, through the actions of those whom we would perceive to be dark or evil, we will have learned and been freed. And in accordance with the perfection of this divine plan, our ability to love and recognize our oneness with those whom some would call our oppressors will be the power that sets those oppressors free as well. For the prophesied return of the purifier will open up the book of life, where the thoughts and deeds of every living being throughout creation are recorded for all to see. And here every soul will have the opportunity to experience the suffering that it has caused through the course of its lives. And as those who many would call their oppressors scan through their experiences, they will see how the hurt that they have caused is met with hate, anger, and with thoughts of revolution and murder and they will feel justified in their cruelty. However, as they continue their search deeper into the Book of Life, they will come across those who, even though they suffered greatly at their hands, have felt only love. And it will be at this moment that those souls which previously knew only hate will learn the spiritual truth that a person can be redeemed just as surely by getting love as they can by giving love. And by thus learning to love and be loved, we will rise above the challenges of this dark night of the soul, to meet the dawn of the glorious resurrection, together as one. With this glimpse of the dawning rays of our rising unity consciousness, let us now consider when and how the first major events might unfold that will bring us to such a profound experience of oneness with everything that we will come to the full realization of every level of creation. 
For it is our intention that by presenting the potential dates when things might unfold, that when people see some of these first events actually happen, it will enable them to believe that the material world is on the verge of collapse, and thereby inspire them to let go of their attachment to it. And in a world where so many have no idea that these changes are coming, we would encourage those who have awakened to the what's and why's of events to resist the urge to focus primarily on how one may save themselves, and to consider instead what one may do to help others. For if one is consumed with the need to save themselves through these days of great change and challenge, they will be driven primarily by the energy of fear. Whereas if one is able to turn their focus towards helping others, they will change their motivation and therefore their vibration from one of fear to one of love. And it will be this love for all and faith in the divine purpose of all that is occurring that enables one to move through all of the challenges of the coming days in relative grace and ease. That said, there are some interesting indicators revealed in Kalman's research of the Mayan calendar that show the potential dates when things might unfold. Of particular interest are the periods known as the fifth day and the fifth night that occur on each step of the pyramid. For it is understood that during the fifth day of each underworld, we typically experience a global event that marks a great leap forward towards our deeper understanding of the consciousness being learned on that level. And past trends show that typically the fifth night brings a great global challenge, which then gives the collective mind the opportunity to put the lesson it has just learned into practice. Looking at events that occur during the fifth day and night over the past few steps on the pyramid, we can see that during the national underworld, the positive values and teachings of Christ were followed in the fifth night by the appropriation and perversion of those teachings during the Dark Ages. While during the planetary underworld, the fifth day brought us World War I, along with the automation of industry and the expansion of our perception of reality through Einstein's theory of relativity. The end of the fifth day was marked by the beginning of the Great Depression, which then continued through the fifth night, accompanied by World War II and the use of the first nuclear weapons against Japan. During the galactic underworld, the fifth day saw a profound shift in consciousness towards peace and harmony, with a tremendous increase in the number of spiritual groups sprouting up all over the world. While the fifth night was marked by the 2008 collapse of the American and European economies, which now brings us to our current step on the pyramid, known as the Universal Underworld. Based on this understanding of the unique energies and experiences that typically accompany the fifth day and the fifth night, one could expect that the major shifting of consciousness and world events would begin during these periods. Thus it is possible that during the fifth day, which extends from July 31st to August 18th, 2011, we could see a creative expression of unity consciousness manifested through an event as spectacular as the presentation of some major medical or technological breakthrough created to benefit mankind. It is also possible that during this time we could see the beginning of another Great Depression, as we saw at the end of the fifth day of the planetary underworld. This is a very likely possibility, which could be catalyzed by the flagging faith in the U.S. markets, caused by the Americans having recently reached its $14.3 trillion debt ceiling, which could result in a crippling of the American economy, which could then fully collapse during the fifth night, which extends from August 18th to September 5th. During the fifth night, it is very possible that an economically fragile America could be hit by another staged terrorist attack which would be the final blow that causes the collapse of the American economy and sends the economies of the world into a downward spiral. And just as we saw during the fifth day and night of the planetary underworld, the world's slump into another Great Depression would be followed by the start of another Great War, that of World War III. The dates of the events following the fifth day and night, including the fake alien invasion, three days of darkness, and the major earthquakes caused by the passing of Comet Elenin are impossible to guess apart from saying that they will probably happen near the end of September. For it is our belief that things will occur faster than anyone can imagine, as hinted by the age-old prophecy that the end will come like a thief in the night. 
And for this reason, we would encourage all of our viewers to use the decline of the economy or any major event that might occur during the fifth night as the sign by which they will choose to let go of their attachments to the material world and its systems and to leave the cities and return to nature where the mountains, waters and trees will support their return to the original way mentioned in the Hopi prophecies. For we are told in the prophecy of the blue and red Kachinas that life will be so bad in the cities that many will choose to leave this plane, some in whole groups and that only those who return to the values of the old ways will be able to find peace of mind. For it is in returning to a simple life with and upon the earth, amongst our forest and mountains, that we shall find relief from the madness that will be all around us. That said, it is essential to understand that we are always exactly where we are meant to be, when we are meant to be there. And even if one cannot make it out of the city, it is important to remember that one can always connect to the earth and its elements by turning their thoughts to a glass of water, or the ground beneath their feet, or a tree, a lit candle, or even a light breeze. And so with this understanding of when events might unfold, let us consider how the increasing intensity of world events has been divinely orchestrated to bring all of us to such a profound experience of oneness that we would come to the full realization of every level of creation by October 28th, as suggested in Kalman's research of the Mayan calendar. According to Kalman's work, the focus for learning during the ninth wave from March 9th to October 28th, 2011, is unity consciousness. And therefore it is thought by some that the increasing intensity of events that are set to unfold in the next few months will move us through progressively deeper experiences of unity and oneness, which would peak sometime around October 28th, when the Earth will return into the higher vibrational electromagnetic field of the purifier. For many, this process will be experienced as an expansion of consciousness, which extends from the personal to the universal where one's first experience of unity might occur through a realization or connection that happens within oneself. Next, an increase in the intensity of world events, such as food shortages and the collapse of the economy, could inspire people to expand their understanding of unity beyond the self, by encouraging them to seek out other like-minded friends and individuals with whom they might share resources and understanding that could help them meet the increasing demands of the moment. A further increase in the intensity of the global situation caused by massive earthquakes and other global disasters could cause a further expansion of the concept of unity by inspiring people to extend their caring beyond people in their own social sphere, resulting in a genuine caring and collaboration among strangers that comes from the realization that we are all in this together. Further intensification of the global situation through events as extreme as a fake alien invasion and the complete collapse of world systems could then cause some to perceive the formation of a new world order as the ultimate expression of unity, while others will see ultimate unity as the mobilization of the world's citizens in a revolution against such a system. However, as people across the face of our broken and battered planet rise to the peak of polarity with the forces of the New World Order grasping for control and the masses rising in revolt, the Earth's return into the higher vibrational field of the purifier around October 28, 2011 will bring the collective mind to a fully realized experience of unity consciousness which will show the world that true unity is not the desire to gather large masses of like-minded people to support or oppose an idea, but rather true unity is the soul's realization that all is one already. For the passing of the purifier with its phenomenal gravitational and electromagnetic forces will cause such intense shifting of our outer and inner experiences of reality that we will have one of two choices. We may choose to see ourselves as separate from the events we are experiencing, which could rise to such a peak of intensity that our increasingly fearful desire for things to change would drive us insane. Or we could choose with love and faith to surrender our personal will to the divine will of the Tao and realize that all that we are experiencing is a projection of our minds and that it is divine. 
and in accordance with the divine wisdom given to us through the Tibetan Book of the Dead, you will see that recognition is simultaneous with liberation. For just as the soul's journey through the bardos encourages one to recognize that everything we experience is a divine projection of our mind, so too are we urged to realize the same during our brief journey through the material world. Although such spiritual seeking is met with little success in today's world because of the extreme difficulty in reaching integration in a vibrational field that is as psychically polluted as that of the Earth, during the revolving course of the cosmic cycles, there arise periods when great redeeming energies return to the Earth, allowing the process of integration to proceed more easily and rapidly. All around the world, there exist ancient cultures and wisdom keepers whose texts and teachings reveal knowledge of such periods having happened in the past, while some even hold prophecies telling of the impending return of these forces of salvation. However, here again, it is essential to understand that this returning Redeemer is not a physical personality of majestic stature, residing somewhere outside the dense material world but is essentially an impersonal divine unifying consciousness manifesting itself as light, love, and wisdom in a field of cosmic rays emanating from the center of our galaxy, via the purifier. Thus the return actually refers to the Earth's cyclic re-entry into the purifier's higher vibrational field, at which point we are anointed by its divine light and influence. And it is because of this divine anointing that the return is widely referred to as the return of Christ, which stemming from the Greek word Christos means the anointed one. Thus we may see that Christ consciousness is not exclusively available to Jesus, but is available to every human being who experiences the infinite, changeless reality that lies at the core of each one of us. For just as the Christ through Jesus displayed only faith and love during experiences of great suffering, so too will all those who wish to follow Christ's narrow path be urged to face the challenges of the coming months with faith, love, and wisdom, willingly sacrificing their fears and attachments to the self so that they may open themselves up to the fully expanded realization that all is one and divine. For in this period of purification, the mirror of truth will be held up for all to see at last, what we have become and which master we have truly served. And when humanity is left with no other choice but to face the truth and ourselves in utter honesty, to look, to see, and to weep in genuine repentance, then can love open our hearts and reveal to us the way of true devotion and holiness. It is thus, through humble surrender, that each person is given the opportunity to hasten their own spiritual growth and simultaneously transition into a bright new era. So how might our interaction with the purifier bring us to such a profound experience of oneness with everything that we would come to the full realization of every level of creation by October 28, 2011? The answer to this may be summed up in one word vibration. For if NASA's information suggesting that Comet Elenin is or is being followed by a supermassive brown dwarf star is true, then we will be greatly affected by the extremely high vibrations of its electromagnetic field upon passing, whose frequencies will be so great that some people say they could alter our experience of reality by raising our vibrations to the point where we will experience other dimensional planes as evidenced in the Hopi prophecy of the blue and red kachinas, where it says, When the purifier comes, many things will begin to occur that will not make sense, for reality will be shifting back in and out of the dream state. Things unseen will be felt very strongly. There will be many strange beasts upon the earth in those days, some from the past and some that we have never seen. The nature of mankind will appear strange in these times we walk between the worlds and we will house many spirits even within our bodies. After a time we will again walk with our brothers from the stars and rebuild this earth, but not until the purifier has left his mark upon the universe. That said, it is widely accepted in both the realms of science and spirituality that the human body, comprised mostly of water, is a conductor of sound, light, and information, all of which travel through our bodies as vibrations. 
Aware of this, we may now imagine that as the higher vibrations of the purifier move through us, it will cause our bodies to resonate with their frequency. Thus, as our vibrations rise and match the never before experienced frequency levels of the purifier, we will be able to perceive higher levels of the electromagnetic spectrum, at which point we will be able to perceive all of the sounds, images, and entities that exist within our newly achieved range of frequency. Vibrating at this level, the spirits of the dead may be seen and heard, rising to meet the coming dawn, as humanity expands its senses and consciousness to perceive the forgotten fifth element of ether, that which connects us all. Here too, we may perceive the parallel realms of the astral planes and share encounters with mythical beings, all of whom will attend us and the rest of humanity as our increasing frequency brings us all closer to a collective experience of oneness. As we reach the peak of frequency, the voices of others that we have begun to hear in our heads will rise in numbers and climax at the point when we hear all the thoughts of creation and experience all actions as if they were our own. So too may it seem like all the events of these lives are happening at once, and that all places are this place. As one may imagine, this expanded perspective of oneness could be quite an intense experience. And for those who choose to hold on to their knowledge of what is and is not possible, such events will threaten to shatter their psyches, as every sense is simultaneously overloaded. Thoughts of good or evil will give rise to those of their dualistic opposites and attract like energies that further threaten the traveler's ability to stay safe and sane. And here we will have a choice to either clutch to the banks of that raging river and be dashed against the rocks, or to simply let go and surrender to the roar and the flow. Some will try to hide from this experience. Some will try to escape it. Some will welcome it some will recognize it, and some will have known all their lives that the end would be like this, exactly like this. As the truth of oneness, followed by divine love, returns to our ailing planet, those who love the truth and who are therefore consecrated to serving the truth without compromise or self-concern will greatly rejoice at the shattering of the illusion of separation. And when at long last humanity is awakened to its oneness with the earth and all living things, we will raise our voices as one and join the eternal song of the universe. Have faith, for we are awakening as one.
looking through the eye that's looking back at you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to do it now.